Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So in this video we will take a look at LEDs and more specifically how to drive them. So just so everybody can follow here, this is a, a standard through hole LED and we have the anode here as the long leg, this is the positive lead and the cathode is the short lead which is the negative. So current will flow only into the anode and out of the cathode. If you try to push current the other way, so you have a positive voltage on this side and negative voltage here, uh, nothing will happen. It simply does not allow the current to flow. It does, however, have a, a fairly low breakdown voltage. So you cannot put a very high voltage in reverse before the diode will just break down and be destroyed. Usually there's also this little cutout here where they remove part of the circle so that you can see which one is the positive and negative when it's plugged into a circuit board and the leads have been removed. And the flat side here is for the cathode or the negative side. Despite from what you might find on the internet, it's not really difficult to drive an LED. Most of the time you just hook up a resistor in series with it and you apply say 5 volts across from here to here or you could do it the other way around, it doesn't really matter. Positive, negative. This is a 1 kilo ohm resistor and it makes sure to limit the current. If we apply 5 volts across here, we have a drop. The 4 volt voltage drop of the LED is around 1.7 volts. So we have 3.3 volts left across this 1 kilo ohm resistor that gives us 3.3 milliamps, which this LED would be more than happy with. This is fine for LED indication in our circuits. Let's say if something is on or off, typically 3-5 milliamps would be perfectly fine for that and we can use resistors. We do however dissipate more energy in the resistor than we use for lighting up the LED. Remember we have 1.7 volts across the LED and we have 3.3 volts across the resistor, almost double. That's when people start to think, let's lower the voltage and lower the resistance. And we will decrease the loss in the resistor. This could be for battery powered circuits or for high power circuits where you really can't handle that much heat. And that's fine until some point where this resistor starts to be insignificant. And when most of the power is dissipated in the LED, we start to get problems. And that's because these LEDs love to go into a thermal runaway. A normal uh, resistor here, it will have a positive temperature coefficient, whereas the temperature goes up, the resistance goes up. So that limits the current, it actually it lowers the current when the temperature increases, if you keep the same voltage across it. It's opposite for the LED. If you increase the temperature, then the forward voltage of the LED decreases, allowing more current to flow with the same voltage. It should be noted that the forward voltage goes up with current. So if you try to push more current for it, the forward voltage goes up slightly, but it's not much. If the LED is operating at say half its current and it's in fine conditions. If you apply just 100 millivolts more to it, it could be outside of its recommended operating area. And that can easily happen by heating and cooling the LED. So if you didn't have the resistor altogether, it would only be the forward voltage of the LED that limits the current. So let's try to do a test to see that. So I have set up an LED here and I will slowly turn up the voltage until something starts to happen. We expect around 1.7 volts it will be lighting up. So actually at 1.6 volts we get a, a slight glow in the LED. I think that's visible on the camera also. 1.7 volts we have 2 milliamps. 1.8 volts we have 10 milliamps. Let's go up in smaller steps. Say I want 
20 milliamps, that's the maximum for this LED. And here we go. But, wah, wah, wah. You can see already we have a problem. Just the slight heating from this power dissipation, it heats up the dye ever so slightly, and the current just goes up. You can see we started at 20 milliamps, now we're already at 26.5. Say we're in a cold environment and uh, I will freeze this down. And as it gets colder you can see the current is dropping. It's the same voltage but now we're at 4 milliamps. It should be said that this is frozen now but again that's not so uncommon around the world to get negative temperatures and again it's not so uncommon in this world that the temperatures tend to go up slightly so I will heat this with the reflow station I've set it at around 100 degrees Celsius And as I increase this, you can see the current just goes up and up and up. So as you see, this particular LED is not high enough power to, to go into thermal runaway. So it does find its equilibrium, but it's still very sensitive to temperature. And I don't think I really got it that hot because I can easily touch it and it's still well over 30 milliamps. However, this effect does get much worse when you start to go into high power LEDs. So I would like to show you the forward voltage of the LED also, but I think I permanently damaged this one so I'll get a fresh one. <laughs> so. As you see, here's a fresh LED. At 20 milliamps, we have a forward voltage of around 1.8 volts. I'm running a constant current of 20 milliamps, and now let's see what happens when we cool it down. You can see as we cool it to maintain 20 milliamps, the forward voltage goes up to about 1.9. As we heat it up again at around room temperature, we will get down to 1.8. And if we keep heating it, we dropped to around 1.7. And eventually this will go back to 1.8 volts, unless I heated it too much. So as we found out, Without any resistance, it's only the forward voltage of the LED which determines the current. And this forward voltage varies a lot with temperature, and it also depends on the individual LED. So if you take two LEDs, they will have similar forward voltage, but not exactly the same. And from different manufacturers would vary even more. So by including a resistor in series, you can see even if we we changed the forward voltage 100 millivolts, which was approximately going from room temperature to the maximum temperature. With a one kilo ohm resistor, it would only change the current by 100 microamps. But again, as we talked about before, then most of the power would be dissipated in the resistor. We can decrease the resistance and decrease the voltage to get the same current and we would dissipate less energy in the resistor. But as this value gets lower, the significance of the forward voltage gets higher. So we can conclude that for high power LEDs or for high efficiency, we really want to drive the LED from a constant current source. Like I did with the power supply, we adjust the voltage to keep the current exactly the same. And for the constant current source, you have two different options. 
There's a linear approach and a switch mode approach. Well, the linear approach can be a little bit better efficiency than this. Even though you are going to dissipate the excess energy in the transistor, you can lower the voltage and minimize that uh, loss. And even with the lower voltage, that linear, linear regulator can easily adjust and keep the current the same. Or you can go for a higher voltage and use a switch mode power supply to output a constant current. And that can easily be up to 95% efficient these days. It's probably more expensive, but if you want high efficiency, it's probably also the solution that you want. So I think in the next video, we'll try to make one of these switch mode constant current power supplies. So thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. See you.